Hello everybody and welcome back to the C programming tutorial series. Today we're going to be getting into C strings. Um, before we jump right into the video, I would like to clarify something. If some of you have come from other programming languages, even maybe C++, you may think that a string is a built-in data type in every language. And in most higher abstraction level languages, like for instance Python, PHP, all this kind of stuff, Strings are predefined data types. In the case of C++, there it's not a data type. It's an, actually a, a class type. It's an object. Um, in C, it's nothing. There's no such thing as a string in C. Although there is something called a C string, so it's a different method of doing it. So you know, if you came from PHP or something like that, or even C++, you'll see string and then test e or you know name equals John or something, right? You'd see it like that. In C, it does not work. So we have to think, how are we going to store a string in C? And you got to think in terms of memory. Now, I, I really didn't want to get into memory, and we're going to be talking a, briefly about pointers, and I really didn't want to get into this this early in the tutorial series. It's kind of like an introduction to C right now, and those things are evil, and they make people really hate C. But you know, I, we kind of have to when we're talking about strings, and strings are really important, so we have to cover it um, right about now. So, yeah. So we got to think, how are we going to represent this in memory? Well, you got to think, you know, each of these is a character, right? You have the character J, then O, then H, then N, and then you just put them all together, and you have the string John. So if you have a character like um, John 1, one representing the first character, you'd have J, right? Or J like that. So that would represent the first character. And then maybe you'd have John 2 and that'd be O. So it's kind of the same thing. So how this is stored in memory is via ASCII. I don't know if you guys know what ASCII is, but basically the ASCII code for J would be stored in memory. I don't know what it is. I don't have the table up or anything like that. But you'd have the byte representing J, and then you'd have a byte representing O, and then a byte representing H, and then a byte representing the N. And then finally after that, you'd have a null terminator, so you just have 0x00 as the byte, and um, that basically signifies the end of the string. Um, as, and a string in C is defined as a sequence of zero or more characters, which is followed by the null terminator. Um, I have, may have just thrown a whole bunch of nomenclature at you, and I'm sorry guys, but yeah, it's, it's necessary for learning strings, and like I said, we, we kind of have to cover that right now. So, there are two main methods of writing a string. So right now, this is how we wrote a string originally, and that is okay, but let's do it a different way. Let's make that percent %s, and then we're going to do hello world. Okay, we're going to make that the variable. So there's two main ways we can do this, and there, if you're an advanced programmer, you will probably realize uh, or if you're experienced with C and you're just watching this for whatever reason, you know that they're both the same thing, just like defined a different way. I'm going to show you guys what I mean. So we have method one and we have method two. So method one is via arrays. And if you've come from a programming language before, you know what I'm talking about when I'm talking about arrays, hopefully. And then method two is via pointers. And unless you have coded C or C++, you probably have no idea what these are because these aren't, you won't find pointers in, you know, like Python or anything like that. So first we'll start off with arrays because um, to, to keep those who have done some programming before in the loop a little bit here. So arrays. An array is exactly what you think it is. You have you can have an integer array for scores on a test, and then you just have, you know, 50, maybe somebody didn't do so well, and then you have somebody who did pretty well with an 80, then you have like an A student with a 99, and then you have somebody who skips class all the time and has a 15, you know what I mean? You have an, an array of integers, right? So that's an array. And if you've come from other languages, you understand exactly what this is. So it makes sense that in C we would have an array of characters, right? That's how we could represent a string. So how we do this is char, and then we'll call it hello world as per our printf statement down there. And then we'll just have these square brackets, and we'll do hello world. Now there's a few, there's there's a way, I, I did the defining a little bit different too. You could specify the size in here, right? It's kind of ambiguous. So 
this is 12 characters, I believe, right? Yeah, 12 characters. And then you have a 13th for the Null Terminator. So I could put 12 in here, or even 13 if you wanted to be extra safe. And that would work. But if you do not specify the size inside of the square brackets, um, it will just be big enough to hold the initialization of what you have here. So it will hold just that. So that works out, right? And it includes the Null Terminator. If you're doing a fixed size, I would always recommend going one byte or one number higher than your character count. Now it shouldn't matter because you have 12 characters here. If you put 12 here, since it's a zero based index array, you should have space for your Null Terminator at the end, which is that, although you don't write that in the actual string because the compiler adds it in for you. But I always leave one extra byte. Worst case scenario, you just wasted a byte, and some people might get mad at me for perf. Um, it's one byte, you know what I mean? And that's not a big deal. What is a big deal, if you fail to allocate that byte when you needed it, and you now left your program open to hacks and, and bad stuff. So, yeah. But generally, for something like this, for just a fixed string, you don't need to specify the, the size. The compiler can get it for you. The compiler is your friend. So we'll just leave that right there. The second way is using something called a pointer. Now a pointer is very similar to an array. Now I am not going to get into pointers full-blown in this tutorial because they're confusing, they're annoying, and they put people off from C. And I don't want to do that today. I just want to talk about some basic strings. I don't want to go into the um, the full you know, full blown close to the metal stuff with pointers. But basically, what it's saying is kind of the same thing. It's saying, okay, find where H is in memory, and then keep going until you find the null terminator. So it's pointing to the first character in memory. That's what a pointer is. It points to something. Wow. That's complicated, right? No, it actually does get more complicated than that, but basically it points to something, right? And it points to this H. We're not going to go much further than that because I don't want to make this tutorial long and boring. So, yeah, we have that H there, and we found it, and it's finding it to the, the end. And that's why, experienced programmers, you might see that an array, like a pointer, an array is basically kind of like a pointer, right? So how we do that is something called a char star, or a character pointer. Um, and we'll call this hello world as well. I'll just have one commented when we try each one, and then we will have hello world. Right, so we don't have the square bracket operators, which is a little bit more intuitive. We just have this char star. Now, C is a lot more annoying than C++ when it comes to this aspect. Um, and I'll talk about that in a bit. I'm not going to get into that right now. So, if we go ahead and com comment out this method and we go ahead and build this code, uh, make and T3. Oh, T3. There we go. It'll print hello world. Perfectly fine. There we go. That uses an array. And then if we go ahead and comment that out and we use the pointer method, it'll it'll work just the same. I'm gonna spoil it for you guys, I'm sorry. Yeah, it'll work just the same. So both methods work. Now commonly if you're reading somebody else's C code, uh, to try to learn from it, you might see const char star. That just means it's a constant, so it can't really be changed after it's been initialized. Um and that's commonly used for functions and stuff like that, but we're not going to go that far into the tutorial today. What I really wanted you guys to take out of this is that there's no predefined string data type in C, and uh, in C, a string is basically just an array of characters. Uh, kind of the same thing with a pointer, right? It's just pointing to an array of the characters there. And, um, and yeah, and notice down here with a printf, I did not do that, right? I left... The, I actually used formatted printing the way it's supposed to be used, right? I don't have a I don't have a vulnerability going on there. We're good programmers. We're not going to write vulnerable code, and um, yeah, so that'll work perfectly fine. Like I said, there's more to this uh, when you go lower to the metal, but we're not going to go through that today. You guys don't have to worry about that yet. And I hope you guys enjoyed the tutorial. If you did, please leave a like below, comment any questions or comments you guys may have on the video, and subscribe. And I will see you guys in the next video where we will be talking about data types. So we'll be talking about, you know, some integers and some doubles and some floats and some chars and all that kind of stuff. And we're going to be talking about its size and memory. We're not going to go full-blown into memory, but I just want to cover its size a little bit and um, those types of data types. And I will see you guys in the next video.